Okay, and welcome to our next unit here in our chapter on information theory. So here I want to uh, extend the discrete version of entropy to its continuous counterpart. So I want to introduce a differential entropy, yeah, which express, expresses the expected information for, well, continuous random variables and continuous distributions. And I also, again, want to go through basic properties, which will look fairly similar to what we did before. So there's good news and bad news. So the good news is the generalization of the definition of differential entropy is really straightforward generalization where we just transform a sum into an integral when we go from discrete to continuous. And many of the properties will stay the same, but not all of them. Okay, let's take a direct look at this. So for a continuous random variable x, with now a continuous or with, with a given density function f of x, we now introduce the so-called differential entropy, which is just entropy for continuous random variables written with this, I don't know now, lowercase h or eta of x, which we can also put on top of the density function instead of the random variable x. Yeah, simply as well, it's, it's again minus the expectation of log of the distribution. And now we just take, we take here an integral instead of a sum over, over discrete values. Okay, so far so easy, so far so obvious. Again, the base of the log, it's somewhat arbitrary. We could use base two, measure in bits. We could use base e and measure in nuts, so far. So unsurprising. The integral above doesn't necessarily now exist for all densities. And that's a little bit unfortunate already. It also now becomes clear that differential entropy is not necessarily non-negative and that begins to become really bad because if this is now a measure of uncertainty, I guess we expected this to be a positive or non-negative as for its discrete friend, the discrete entropy. So, here is uh, an example which maybe shows you how to calculate this and this which also shows that this actually can become negative. So here's a pretty, I don't know, normal, well, not a normal distribution, but a, a normal beta distribution. And we now do minus log of things and we turn the distribution into kind of its surprisal function where we have these, I'm not sure whether you should say events, but we have these, these event regions here and depending on how likely or un, yeah, depending on, on, on how unlikely they are, the more surprising it would be if we would sample a value from that region and this is exactly expressed by this minus log of stuff. And now what we do is we do simply we multiply these two things here together. So the negative logs times the density, yeah, which we do exactly here. And then we yeah, compute the integral. And for this specific density, you now can see that the differential entropy is actually minus 4.8. So it can become negative. Yeah? Even for a pretty, I don't know, vanilla looking distribution, it can become negative. Here's a further example. So let's now calculate the differential entropy of a continuous uniform distribution. So we now, let's assume we have a uniform random variable on this interval here, which goes from zero to A. Then, yeah, it's pretty obvious that we have a density value of one divided by A for each element here in this interval. And we can now simply compute our differential entropy by writing down the formula for differential entropy, plugging in the density. So plugging it in here, plug it, plugging it in there. We simply figure out that log of one divided by A is minus A. Yeah, and then lots of stuff here cancels out. And at the end, we just get log of A. So yeah. So far, so simple. We know how to calculate differential entropy for uniform continuous things. You can, this actually has here differential entropy of zero. Yeah, so not sure whether that's, I don't know, 
surprising to you, no pun intended. So if you have this uniform distribution here, which goes from zero to one, that has differential entropy of zero. Here you have one with a positive differential entropy. So if it's if the, if the support is you know, larger than one, if the interval is smaller than one, differential entropy will actually be zero. Okay. And we can calculate differential entropy now for a second and more important example. So we'll now derive a nice little formula for the differential entropy of a Gaussian. So let's assume our x variable here is a univariate normal distribution, it has a mean value of mu and a variance of sigma squared. We write down the formula for differ differential entropy. We plug in the density for our uh, Gaussian. Won't read that out here. I didn't plug it in for reasons we'll see in a second. Now what I want to do is I want to take a look at the well. I want to take a look at the log function of this guy here. Let me actually remove the scribbling a little bit. So I'm going to take a look at this thing here. I want to see that uh, the log is being applied to a product. So I can turn this now into a sum. So here I have f of x times log of this constant plus f of x times log of x that cancels out. So I just am left with this quadratic term here on the inside of the exponential function. Now, the next nice thing I can do is I can see that this thing here, this is just a constant. It doesn't depend on x. So I can draw this to the outside. So I can put it here. And now I'm left with an integral over my density. Because this is a density, this integral will be one. So it vanishes. And here I can do, well, maybe something similar, not exactly the same. I can take a look at this guy. This is now constant. I can draw this to the outside. And if I now look at this here, yeah. So this is an integral over the density times x minus mu squared. So, well, this is exactly the definition of the variance for a continuous density. So we know the variance of our Gaussian, it's uh, sigma squared. So we can write that down. It will even cancel out a little bit with uh, one divided by two sigma squared. So the only thing that's left for this last part is 0.5. Yeah, and for this first part, we simply copy over the constant and if you want to, you can also unify the whole formula here by, yeah, somehow putting the 0.5 the, the, the into the log. So uh, we can say one, one half is the same as, ah, oh, well, we don't do exactly that. We actually, we factor out the one divided. So we have this here, ln of two pi sigma squared plus one half, and that's the same as one half of ln two pi sigma squared plus one. Now I can also now say this is one, one half times ln of two pi sigma squared e, okay, because yeah, this ln, I can turn this product here, this last product into a sum and ln of e is just one. And also we can in, invert this multiplying with one half in the sense of that we now take the square root here on the inside of the log. So we do ln of two pi sigma squared well, actually, let's not put the sigma squared there. Let's put the e here, the sigma here, and then we take the square root here, and here we just put the sigma. Okay, and that's exactly our formula. Yeah, there's uh, some trivial transformations at the end to write it without the sum. Okay, what else can we do? I guess we can take now a, a look at this formula here of the differential entropy of a Gaussian. First thing we can note, this is actually not a function of mu. So apparently there's some translation invariance going on. So it only depends on the variance. So if we have 
like a Gaussian here with a certain variance and a Gaussian here with a certain variance. If the variance is, is the same but the mu is different, differential entropy is still the same. And we'll see later that this principle actually holds in general. We can also see that as the variance increases, differential entropy also increases and you can see this also here from this plot because here I've plotted the variance against the entropy or I plot the entropy as a function of the variance for a univariate Gaussian and you can see how it monotonously increases and you can even see the point, this, this switching point here where the entropy becomes negative if the variance is smaller than uh, roughly 0 0.06, okay? And yeah, I, ho I also hope this makes sense, right? Maybe I should have even discussed this here a little bit. So if we look at this Gaussian with this variance and we could look at this other Gaussian with this much larger variance, uh, you can see that the differential entropy of this guy here is larger than for this guy because this guy here on the right hand side in a certain sense is, is harder to predict. Yeah, it has more uncertainty and kind of in the limit, yeah, we spread out the Gaussian more and more and more, variance becomes larger and larger and larger. And I guess, I'm not sure I want to say that, but in a certain sense you, well, you, in the limit there's this, this no information distribution that we could end up with yeah, where the kind of the probability mass is yeah, stretched out across the whole real line, yeah? Okay, but at least it should be plausible that if, if variance becomes larger and larger and larger, yeah, we have this this super flat flat Gaussian where it's where we have like maximal uncertainty and we don't know how to predict a sampled event from this very well. So we would kind of be surprised. So surprisal would really be maximal, and the limit the limit on the other on the other extreme would be kind of this this very peaked delta distribution that I'm failing at <laughs> uh, drawing nicely yeah, where yeah, we have this probability mass peaked around the expectation and there's basically just one value that we are sampling from this which is the expected value, the mean, and we wouldn't be surprised at all by, by sampling a value from this distribution and observing it. Okay, we can also now try to compare our differential entropy to its discrete counterpart a bit more in detail. It turns actually out if we take a deep, deeper look it's not so simple to characterize the differential entropy as a straightforward generalization of our discrete entropy. We can try to do this with the limiting process. So we can take a look here at our continuous density and now we can turn this into a quantized discrete random variable where we look at these little little intervals here, towers. So, and then we define yeah, our um, the probability mass function, or we define the support of our discretized x delta here by maybe taking something like the left left end of all of these intervals. Yeah, yeah, or maybe the middle or something like this. And what we can now show if our density function or continuous density of the continuous random variable x is actually Riemann integrable then what we can show is that um, the discrete entropy plus the log of delta actually goes to the differential entropy as delta goes to zero and our intervals become smaller and smaller and smaller. So I, I'm not going into the details of this argument here but what I do want to communicate is that the entropy of this qu quantized discrete random variable is approximately then now the, the differential entropy yeah, plus an additive term n. Yeah. So you can already see here that this, this connection is maybe not as straightforward as we would like it to be but there is a connection. Let's go back to, to simpler things. So as before as for uh, the discrete discrete entropy, entropy, we can now define the joint differential entropy. So for a bunch of continuous random variables x1, x2 up to xn, we can now define our joint differential entropy as that, as, as, yeah, 
as this integral here when we go over the joint, joint density function f of x, where x now is a vector and we integrate over yeah, r to the r to the n, I guess, or over this, this n-dimensional support of this n-dimensional density. So we could now also calculate the entropy for a multivariate Gaussian. It's not that much harder than for the univariate case. Um, not doing this here on the slides. Maybe you want to try this yourself. It's really not that difficult, but I'm giving you here the formula here, which looks very similar as before. So the only difference is that we have here the determinant of our covariance matrix sigma in the formula instead of the, the variance, uh, which does make sense. And yeah, I want to wrap things up by stating a bunch of properties of differential entropy. So let's go through them. So unfortunately, um, differential entropy can be negative. Fortunately, it is again additive for independent random variables. The differential entropy now is actually maximized by the normal distribution if we restrict uh, our distributions to, or if, if we restrict this optimization problem to distributions all with the same variance or with the same covariance. So that restriction we need to make, otherwise it's yeah, yeah, un unlimited what we can get in this maximization of the entropy. But if we restrict to all of the same variance or all of the same covariance, so we now also have a bound here on the differential entropy function. And we know what the kind of the maximal thing is that can happen, or which distribution maximizes entropy. We can also say that our differential entropy is maximized by the continuous uniform distribution if we restrict our random variable and its support to a fixed range. It's possible to show that differential entropy is translation invariant. We saw that result already for the univariate Gaussian. We can also produce a nice little formula for the differentiable entropy of a times x. Now you can see what happens here that this becomes differential entropy plus log of the absolute value of a. And we can also show this here for random vectors and a matrix of a. And nearly all of these properties are quite simple and straightforward to show. So the only things which are a little bit more involved are these maximization things here, but it is possible. So maybe do try this as a homework exercise, but you might need a, a few more lines and a few more minutes to think about this. Uh, and you might also for the multivariate versions, yeah, you need to be able to, I don't know, um, be able to, to work with uh, multivariate integrals.